Hey guys, it's Amber, and um, welcome to day six of December Daily. So I have my day five here, super simple, just a photo, a filler card with a little embellishment, and then my journaling. I'm gonna be working on the back of that. Um, I've been enjoying keeping most things that spreads, but single pages are fine too. Um, but on the sixth, Taylor Swift released a new Christmas song, and I thought maybe it would be fun to show um, a layout with all the new music that's come out this year. Not just my favorites, which I've done in the past, but new stuff. So I printed um, the album covers here on a 4x6 with a little bit of a white border. And I have my number 6 here like always. And I've been pulling some cards out. I'm thinking about using this Jasmine Jones card here. It's nice and bright but it's got a little bit of something. But the red is very similar to the red that's in my photos. I have this old Fala Law card from 2017 that I'm thinking about using. I was also considering this like tree bark card but then that looked like too busy so we'll see and then I want to have it be a spread so that I can start with day seven because we're going to be doing something big um, with the kids so what I want to do is maybe use this Mary 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 card and I found this holiday playlist so I was just tracing around it with a pencil I was going to hold it steady but when it's a white card and it could slip I don't want it to like get messed up so I just trace it lightly with a pencil and then I'm going to probably put this in the middle here because the colors play off well here I can put a tiny bit of journaling you can still see my uh, font on my filler paper here I also considered doing something with this and maybe using like a different card here because it had um you know the, the red and the green and the wreaths and holly that I've been going for but um not really the vibe I'm going for. I really think I like the green. So I'm thinking I'm gonna stick with that and start cutting this out and I'll pop you on fast forward and show you the rest of my process. Okay guys, so as you can see, I'm getting ready to start my process here. And one of the first things that I did was cut out this hexagon that I had drawn lightly on this holiday playlist card. And this layout ends up taking on a totally different vibe from where I started. It has a similar look by the end, but I went from considering making that a journaling spot to thinking about like layering all these hexagon fun shapes and I show a little bit of my play here just to show some of my decision making and thought process but I actually end up not using any of these I think like the background was pretty busy and the smaller hexagon shapes were exactly that they were just smaller than that main piece in the middle and I just couldn't find anything that looked right or had a good balance but I played with some of the chipboard from the add-ons, played with that uh, cork hexagon shapes, and I leave them on the backing so that I can just, you know, move them around, play around. But what I ended up deciding to do was create a hexagon flip-out like Pam Baumwood did in the Product Play 3 class. So once I decided to do that, I decided that the inside piece was going to be this um, Kelly Perky stamp with embossing powder on white. And it says, the best way to spread Christmas cheer is singing loud for all to hear, which is a quote from Elf. And I am showing you my process here, showing you how I use my stamp platform from Tim Holtz and how that stamp fit perfectly on that red piece of cardstock. I have everything all ready to go. And I literally went to go grab my heat embossing tool, realized I could not find it anywhere. So I got my new um, anti-static bag in the mail from scrapbook.com. That's a Ranger Ink one. Uh, brushed a little bit of it off, got my stamp all ready to go with my Versamark ink, put the embossing powder on, literally everything, and then I could not find my heat embossing tool anywhere after searching for forever. So I ended up having to scrap that idea and I ended up redoing the stamp with just white ink, which I don't end up showing. And I still loved it, I just wanted a really clean and crisp look, so I was a little bit disappointed to be honest with you. And I did try a hair dryer. It did not work at all, no matter how many minutes I tried to let it be hot. So I may have to invest in a new one. My boyfriend thinks it made it out to the garage. He's not sure why it went out there, but we can't find it and it is missing. <laughs> so eventually we'll get on there. But as you can see, it's stamped really nice and clear. I love using that Tim Holtz stamp platform. It really helped me make a better use of my stamps. I'm a little bit of a perfectionist. I don't like messy stamping and it really helped make quite a difference. I highly 
recommend investing in one if you are looking to be able to get more use out of your stamps. So from this point on, I had decided to make that little booklet. And what I'm doing here is taking a star die. And I had this awesome idea to punch out the center of one of the hexagons. One of the things in the product play class that we had realized is, is that the stars go so well with hexagons. So I just thought it would make a really neat like window. And this flip out doesn't even really have any substance. It's really more fun with playing with products. Like there's no journaling inside. There's no pictures inside. It's really literally me just having fun with product. <clears throat> so I got my cuddle bug out, as you can see, ran it through front and back, and then I'm going to pull the washi tape off and I do like a little happy dance because it just looks so neat with a little tiny window inside with the star. And there's the reveal. Looks super awesome. Really happy. So there I'm testing how it uh, folds, how everything looks. <clears throat> and then I had printed this out on copy paper uh, from the Allie Edwards Product Play 3 classroom PDF file. And I used the copy paper because I thought it would be easier to fold, but it was a little too thin and you could see adhesive and things. So I was cutting out some extra pieces in white cardstock just to back it, make it look thicker, make it look a little bit more white and less see-through. So I'm just adding that onto the base with some Gina K rolling dot adhesive. And then I'm just going to trim off the edges a little bit there. And on my base, I'm going to use one of the cork hexagons. And then that red piece is one of the red die cuts from the advent calendar that I trimmed down to a hexagon. I've used a couple of those in this. Uh, I punched one round for an ornament. I think I punched one round to fit into a wreath shape. And then I moved one into that hexagon. So uh, just having fun playing with those. They're a really nice bright red that fits everywhere. So here I'm just erasing some pencil lines from my tracing probably trying to create all these extra layers <clears throat> just attaching that with some rolling dot adhesive and then I'll be re getting ready to add my cover on here in just a minute which is that original holidays playlist holiday playlist card So I actually left that slightly larger because no matter how many times I tried to trim the edges a little bit uh, or refold it, it's flatter and smoother. The hexagon fold out just ends up being a little bit off. So I left the cover slightly larger so it would sort of hide all those uneven imperfections, if you will. And it gave you something a little bit easier to grab onto to help pull it out, which also helped make a difference because I was going to put a tab on it, but I didn't really feel like it needed it. So there I'm just seeing how thick it is and actually it's pretty thin even with that cork piece on there. So I'm getting ready just to f finish up the layout. As simple as it was, I made it a little bit harder than it needed to be. So I'm going to attach it to with red line tape so that it's really secure. And I really like the way it came out because it shows off that pattern paper which I really love. And it's got nice, fun, bright colors, which are going with my red and green theme that I've been trying to run throughout the album as much as I can. <clears throat> and then I've peeled off the backings, and then I'm just getting ready to attach it. Just right smack, smack dab in the center. So the next step, I believe, is going to be where I just attach the number six to that red card. And as always, I peel little extra layers of the chipboard off. And I apologize if you hear my cat meowing in the background. He hears my voice, so he's wanting inside where I'm recording right now. So I'm connecting the two cards together and just trimming off any edges, because I like to have nice clean lines where you don't see any extra pieces of card showing through. And 
And then just trimming off a photo square, adding the adhesive to the six and then placing that down. And then that love card I ended up swapping out for the fa la which ended up being cut down into a hexagon inside my little booklet there. And I think that the colors worked really well and it gave me more of a spot for journaling. And it also says, you know, love these things right now or something like that. So I can talk a little bit about my photos and truth be told that actually was not how I intended to print those photos. I had printed, meant to print all six two by twos and I was going to cut them out and do a two by two page. And for some reason, my printer printed with the border. So I just left it and thought it looked cool. So just leaving you with some photos here at the end and wanted to say thanks again for watching and hope you found some inspiration to play with your products and combine new and old pieces. And I'll see you for day seven. Thanks so much. Bye.